What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back at Copart here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. So let's jump into this video today and see what we find. Some of you may have seen this car before because this has been sitting here since April of 2023. It's a 2022 Honda Civic and I decided we might as well go ahead and check it out because it's still sitting here. It's been here for a year and still sitting here. It is an insurance car and I'm looking at it and trying to figure out why is it here? I'm not sure. I figured it out the last time either, but I think I might see something. I do. I see it. I do. Thankfully, the sun is out today. It has the tiniest of haildings. I mean, the teeny tiniest haildings I think I've ever seen. And it doesn't look like the majority of the car is covered in hail, but there are there are hail dings. It is just really difficult to point them out. Not just on camera, but standing here in person. This is really hard to see. Maybe we haven't seen this one before. You guys tell me if you remember it. 22 Honda Civic Sport parked here for a year. So this car is practically brand new, right? I mean, think about it. It's a 2022. It's been parked here for a year and it's 2024. So this car is like a year old. The interior looks pretty damn clean. It looks good in here. It smells good. Nice tinted windows, black wheels, red paint. I mean, this thing just screams. I love it. I love this car, but I, I cannot remember for the life of me if this is something we've already seen or not. Why is this still sitting here after a year? It just makes me wonder how much money insurance companies are actually making off of us because they can afford to pay out a claim on a car like this and just leave it sitting here, even salvaged from minor hail damage. I'm telling you, you would be hard pressed to find the hail damage on this car if you didn't know it existed. How much money are you making where you can sit on a car that should easily bring you, I don't know how much a Civic is worth, 15,000 maybe, I, I, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know, but to just be able to sit on that for a year and forget about your car. That's crazy to me. Paddle shifters, it's got everything, man. Look at these crazy vents with the honeycombs. I actually really like this. I'm sure it's dead as a doornail. This is a nice little commuter car. I would drive this all day, every day. Obviously, the battery is going to be dead. There should be a push to start somewhere. I assume that they don't have a key anymore. Yeah, completely dead. Cloth interior, not leather, but still. I think it's a really nice little car. I wouldn't mind rolling this thing around at all. Let's pop the hood. I'm curious what the miles are on this thing. Well, it looks like it may have had an oil change or three. You know, I don't know. We're going to find out what the mileage is here in just a second. Let me put the hood prop up on this so uh, the hood doesn't blow away. It's a very, very windy day today. This is, uh, wow, talk about simple. Very simple. We're going to get the booster pack out. We're going to throw it on here real quick. We're gonna to try to fire this thing up. Here we go. There it goes. Oh, I love that digital cluster. That's not digital. <laughs> no, it's not. It sure looks digital though. I mean, so the tack is digital and this is digital, but this is still analog. I mean, looking at it from the camera, you probably can't tell. Maintenance is due. It's got 19,711 miles. That's it. This is a brand new Honda, guys. This thing has got at least 150,000 more miles in it before you got to worry about much, as long as you take care of it. It's literally a new car. And look, it was being serviced by a Dodge dealer. That's intriguing. <laughs> That's, uh, that's intriguing. Looks like it's out of gas. Surprise, the gas is still good after sitting this long. Gears, backup camera. Man, what a great little car. And I'm here to tell you, this little Civic actually feels really big. No joke, it's a little car, but step back and take a look. There is so much room in this. I feel like I got more room in this car than I have driving around in my 1984 Chevy C20 pickup truck. This thing's actually quite roomy. So the AC is on. 
it works nicely. These vents are really cool because you can kind of maneuver them like a jog stick, you know, or a joystick. You can move these wherever you want. Makes the AC really adaptable. Let's turn on the radio. Oh, man. Push and hold power, enter. Oh, it wants the code. No books. Well, there's bound to be a way to take it to the dealership or something. You know, they'll charge you $150 to push in a four-digit code, but for $150, you'll be able to use your radio again. I don't know if it has navigation. I doubt that it does. This is a pretty basic trim car, but I mean, power windows, power locks, obviously cruise control, Bluetooth. It's even got um, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control. This is crazy for a little Econo box. I don't know what this button does right here. It's like a shield around your car, right next to the traction control. I, if anybody knows what that is, tell me. We have some warning lights on the dash. We have traction control, slide or slip protection, low fuel, TPMS. Uh, she's got some. She's got some codes. Of course, with only 19,000 miles, everything's going to work. The window tint was professionally done. This isn't like somebody paid 100 bucks to get their windows tinted. They did a really good job tinting these windows. Give it a little rev. And she sounds healthy. When I get home, I mean, obviously tires are good. They should still be the originals. When I get home, I'm going to pull up this car. In fact, I may do it here. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my watch list. Spare tire... Oil? It's got... Oil. I mean, it's always good to have oil, but it's like 19,000 miles. If you need to put that oil in, you've got a much bigger problem. Um, but better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, I always say. What do you guys think of this? This is something... Boy, those brake rotors are rusted. Wow! This is something I'm really interested in. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to come right back. I'm going to find out what this car is worth. And I'm going to see if Copart even has this thing listed for sale yet. Because this is something I'm interested in. Now, this is one of the things that I really love about cars at salvage auctions. Here it is right here. It's, I didn't realize this. It's been here for a year. And it's going up for sale tomorrow. It's at $6,800. But get this. Over here is the book value. This is the black book value. This is what dealers use to determine what they should pay for cars. I'm gonna get down in the shade where you guys can see a little bit here, all right? But what this is telling me is that with a salvage title, 19,500 miles, this car, although it should be worth around $21,000, is only worth 9,925 bucks. Between 9,925 and 10,850. That's 50% off. You're talking about a $21,000 car that you should be able to pick up from auction for 10 grand. What's it sitting at right now? With 20 hours left on the clock, 6,800 bucks for a new Honda Civic. Are you kidding me? So here's where I'm at. I'm gonna put a bid in real quick and just see what happens, man. I put in seven thousand dollars. Let's see if we can let's see if we can win this thing. You've been outbid. It's a minimum bid car, which means there's a certain amount they're gonna they're gonna take for it, and they won't let it go for less than that. So let's try it again. Let's try seventy three hundred. This seems like a great deal for a car like this. Bingo, and we're winning it. It's still a minimum bid, which means even though we're winning. They may not sell it to us for this. They claim, I don't think this is accurate, but the listing claims the car's estimated retail value is $28,185. And I don't know what they're smoking, but uh, that's definitely prior to having a Utah salvage certificate. This is a salvage title car, guys. So I'm not gonna go crazy with the bids on this. Right now though, we're winning it for 7,300 bucks. Literally one third of the retail value of this car pre-salvage title for a third of it this car is going to last somebody years and years and probably not give you any problems at all because it's a honda and it's probably going to get 150 miles a gallon while you're enjoying not having to go to the service department because things are always breaking now in my opinion this isn't nearly as interesting but it's a 2017 chevy malibu this is Bizarre. The the law says it's from Fleet Services, whoever that is. I, I have no idea. I've never seen that before. The paint is just 
it's it's pretty awful the windshield is actually delaminating all over the top has been painted flat black windows are limo black all of this has faded just into nothing it looks horrible i mean this car and something kind of there's yeah i i'm not touching it but that looks yeah it looks like something you don't want to touch otherwise if you can get over the paint here we go again on this quarter panel all the way up this roof rail here the same thing that's with the top it's all just i don't know what happened here and all along this side as well maybe this thing's got a ton of miles on it but i still find it interesting and the hood has been repainted horribly that's bad that's really really bad yeah i don't know what's going on with this car guys but uh fleet services huh well let's take a closer look at it i'm expecting this thing's probably going to have a ton of miles maybe not the interior is actually really nice and it smells good it's cloth interior no leather here no she's got miles she's definitely got some miles needs a good cleaning oh i don't fit very well somebody's got this seat like way up and lean back all right oh yeah she's got miles february 25th of 2024 168,984 miles i told you she's got miles guys now here's the thing the windshield's probably delaminating because it's a cheap aftermarket windshield this is not a factory general motors windshield I'm sure it's going to have a little Ecotech four-banger under the hood. If I can even get out of this damn thing. Tires on this. Sentry. Looks good back here. Up here. Sentry looks good up here, too. Good tread on the tires. I assume they're going to match over here. Sentry with good tread and Sentry with good tread. So it's got matching tires with excellent tread. Pretty sure somebody tinted that windshield. That's illegal. There's that little Ecotech I was talking about. Now, I know it's high mileage. I know that's going to turn a lot of people off, uh, especially because of the paint. But here's the deal. Paint can be fixed, guys. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. Just because the paint looks a little rough, I'm seeing match tires, nice tinted windows. Get that windshield replaced, and then you don't have to worry about that window tint on the windshield anymore. I would send this down to Mako. I'd tell them, throw, you know, throw an $800 paint job on this thing. Just make it look decent, because right now, looks like absolute crap. The paint's just all different colors and fading and scuffed and... Fix this for like 800 bucks. shoot a decent paint job on it, and as long as the thing runs and drives relatively well, you can have yourself a really good car for very little money because this thing's got a lot going against it. Number one, it's ugly. Let's just be real, it is ugly. The, the paint looks horrible. Uh, it needs a good cleaning on the interior, and it's got 170,000 miles on it. But here's something I'm noticing as I'm looking under the hood. Look at that brake fluid. The brake fluid reservoir is clean. The brake fluid in it looks clean. Now, that's the thing about fleet vehicles. Typically, they are very well maintained. The coolant level, coolant looks clean, and it's to the level that it's supposed to be. Now, transmission is sealed. You're not going to be able to see that. We can check the oil. I'll bet it's probably clean as well, and it is. You don't see any golden oil. Look at that. Either that or there's no oil. Hold up. Wait a minute. There's oil. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> not much. What do you want to bet this doesn't run? I thought the oil was like gold and brand new oil. We're going to put a jump pack on this real quick, guys. We're going to see if it runs. Because if it does, if it'll fire up and the engine isn't rattling around or knocking, it's another one I'm going to put on my list. Because I think with a quick paint job, a windshield replacement, and an interior detail, this thing would be good to go. What do you guys think? Does it run? I think it's going to run. I said I think it's going to run. <laughs> I said, I think it's going to run. Oh, no. No. I mean, I hear everything firing up. Hood. Open the windows. Yeah, yeah. Because the battery's dead, you got to recalibrate the windows. Foot is on the brake. There's a quarter stuck in the shifter. All right, let's try again. Nah. I'm guessing the engine's locked up on this one, guys. Yeah. Well, what do you expect for an engine that's almost got no oil in it? That's a crying shame, though, because this car really could have been something pretty decent. High mileage or not, if it ran, this one would have been one I'd have bid on. Next, how about a 2010 Toyota Tacoma? This is the Rock Warrior Edition. 
with the big frame wrecker ranch hand on the front. This thing's pretty nice, except those wheels look a little suspect to me. Upon closer inspection, you'll see that uh, these are not factory wheels for this truck. These are, in fact, Lexus wheels. That's right. Somebody put some, uh, some Lexus 20s on this truck. I guess they look all right. They don't really go with the white theme, though. I mean, this truck is just... This is... Uh, <laughs> This truck's uh, a work truck. It's got the ranch hand back bumper, flex fuel, 5.7 I-Force, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the routine with these. They're all the same. Um, definitely spent its life working, without a doubt. Nothing wrong with that either. These are stout trucks, man. This is from a remarketing service, and who knows how they obtained possession of this truck, really. It's, it's anybody's guess. Uh, the bed's a little, you know, smash just a little bit but don't worry it's got PPF so it'll be protected in the future um, I'm guessing this thing's got some miles on it these things usually when they're commercial use like this Wow oh wow <laughs> Ooh, wow oh the smell yeah when they're commercial <coughs> that's bad <clears throat> when they're commercial like this they generally don't let go until they are too beat to do much work anymore <laughs> and this one is just oh bullets no kidding man that's worth some money would you look at that i'm not going to touch it i know better but uh yeah there you go all right some ammunition comes with the truck if you decide this is something you got to have front tire is not just flat but it's also completely off the bead so that's something to contend with. This thing is really rough, guys. It, this is... Windshield is shattered. I mean, the body is beat to hell. The interior is beat to hell. This thing looks like it was rode hard and put away wet. Somebody put a seat cover over the seat, and even the seat cover is destroyed. Like, the seat's destroyed, the cover is destroyed. This is rough, man. Headliner's coming down up here as well. There's that shattered windshield I told you about. It is just... It is bad. Does this have a key? It does, and the key was left on. That's nice. They do that so that uh, the battery's dead and we can't start it. There's just some paperwork and stuff in there. Nothing much to really write home about. I guess we can pop the hood. I have zero interest in this truck. None. I got, I got enough trucks I don't need anymore. I got three. Three trucks is plenty. I don't think anybody needs more than three trucks. Uh, how do you open... How do you even... How do I open this hood from under here? You gotta... Oh, it's broken. Oh no. I don't, you guys ain't gonna be able to see it, but uh, it just flops around. You can't open that. <laughs> the cable is no longer attached to the, uh, to the hood release. Huh, well, how about that? All right. I guess we're not going to look at this truck, so let's move on to something else. How about a 2019 Ford Escape Titanium? Now, this one may be a repossession because this is from a credit corporation, and usually that implies that somebody got it repossessed. BF Goodrich tire there with good tread. Looks like we got a BF Goodrich there with good tread. Body so far looks pretty good. Titanium EcoBoost four-wheel drive. This is nice. Yeah, matching tires, good tread. Now, it did take some damage down the side. So, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe they didn't have insurance, and they just kept driving it, and they didn't pay for it. I don't know. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. But it, cosmetics aside, there's nothing stopping this from driving down the road just fine. I don't see any damage to the wheel other than some, some curbing. These doors, I'm sure, open and close just fine. See? No big deal. They work, not a problem. So you could drive it like this, or if you wanted to, you could replace the doors. Either way, it's up to you, no big deal. 2019, let's see what the mileage is. Hopefully, the battery's charged. Really nice white with a kind of a beige leather interior. Oh, she's got power. Look at that. Now, this isn't exactly my cup of tea. This isn't something that I'd be interested in purchasing for myself, but it's a nice kind of crossover style vehicle. It's, you know, smaller than a van, but bigger than a car. It's 
kind of in between there. A nice little, very little SUV. Can you call it that? Does this open? Hey, hey now, listen. There we go. Oh, there's a, a baby walker in the back with mud all over it. How does this happen? Where did this come from? Interesting. I mean, it's a walker, but it's missing the whole seat part, you know? Huh. All right, well, let's see if it'll close itself. And it does. Let's find out what the mileage is on this thing. This is pretty decent. You know, if you had a car lot or something, and you just wanted to flip a vehicle, this one might not be such a bad idea. Oh, she's got some miles. 113,000. 614 miles. Oh, come on. Tell me it runs. Tell me it runs. Switch ignition off. Okay. Maybe I gotta close the door. I don't think you gotta close the door. Why don't we try remote start? Double press. Fuel pump. Nothing. Nothing at all. No. So it doesn't run. Really. It doesn't even try. It does absolutely nothing at all. I mean, everything comes on. Radio comes on. Obviously, instrument cluster is on. But it makes no attempt to start. And I don't... Yeah, it ain't a low battery. It ain't a low battery. The starter doesn't click. It doesn't do anything. Someone left the headlights on. That's nice. You think that was intentional to kill the battery? Yeah, probably so. And I can clearly see the headlights bright as day on there. The thing is with these newer cars, they don't leave the headlights on. Even if you forget, they shut the headlights off for you. If we're gonna shut it off. This is unfortunate, man. You just don't know until you come out here and really look around and see what you're getting yourself into. And I'd like to pop the hood if I could find the, the hood release. Maybe this one's got some kind of mechanical damage. That's sad with, uh, you know, just over 100,000 miles on the odometer that it's already got some like, catastrophic problem. Then again, it could just be a starter. How do you open this hood? This is great. It's somewhere way back there, but I can't. Oh, right here. Interesting. I love Ford, man, because they always have their hood releases in different places. Little EcoBoost. It's got coolant. Maybe we should check and see if it's got oil. I don't think this one needs a jump either, guys, so I don't think I'm even going to waste my jump pack. The headlights were super bright. Even in the sunlight, I could still see the headlights working just fine. It's got plenty of oil. Interesting. Well, like I said, it could be something as simple as a bad starter, although I don't know how easy a starter is to replace on this. I've never worked on one of these. It could be a relay. Ah. I don't know. Don't think it's a battery issue, though. Boy, changing that battery is going to be fun, isn't it? They buried it underneath this cowling. It looks like you got to pull your windshield wipers off and you got to take this off. Oh, that's that's fun. Good job for it. Proof, yet again, that engineers hate mechanics. So here we have a 2016 Chevy Trax. It's got some hail damage all over. <laughs> all over. Windshield is damaged, roof, the hood, this side's got damage. I, it's it's damaged pretty good. The interesting thing, though, is this is from Bridgecrest Financial. And if you don't know who Bridgecrest is, well, that's the lender for Carvana. So typically, if you see something from Bridgecrest, usually it means that it's something that's been repossessed. But this is obviously some type of insurance. Now, it does kind of make me wonder if maybe they purchased some kind of insurance through Bridgecrest. I don't know if they even offer that, but that may be the case. And if it is, then obviously Bridgecrest would be the one to say, now we're totaling this thing out. It's got mismatched tires, but they all have excellent tread. You have some eye moves. You have something called an Avanta. I, the name of some of these tires, I have no idea, guys. Let's take a look at the interior. I bet this one does run. It's ugly as all sin, but I'll bet it runs. Oh, it's clean. Wow. This is really clean. I'm surprised because so many of these that I look at are just, <laughs> they're filthy. The majority of the cars that I've been seeing over here are actually pretty nice. Let's take a look. I love the pattern on these cloth seats. I really do. I think this is a cool pattern. Let's see if this one's got any 
any juice probably not it seems like they never do you get one key fob no remote start really this must have a locking gas cap i'm guessing yeah oh, it's got a little key for the for the gas this is not going to be pushed to start it's one of those old school deals you gotta put the key in and yeah she's dead let's see what the mileage looks like on this a hundred and one thousand four hundred and six 1019 that's probably 2023 so she's got over a hundred thousand miles on her wow i mean aside from the hail damage it actually doesn't look too bad although for a chevy equinox to me it seems a little small i don't know i think the older ones were a little bit bigger definitely wider and a four banger to boot really the Equinox used to have a V6 under the hood, man. A four-cylinder. Good Lord. Oh, hold on. I only want this. There we go. Let's throw a jump on this thing real quick. Let's find out if this one's going to run. Well, it sure is dinging. So that's a good sign. I guarantee you this runs. Yeah. There we go. The engine was real loud for a minute, but remember, sometimes these things sit for a long, long time. This one was picked up January 25th of 2024. Today is March 11th, 2024. So that gives you an idea how long it's probably been sitting with nobody starting it. So uh, takes a minute to build up some oil pressure. Let's take a look at the dashboard and see what we got. 98,000, it doesn't even have 100,000 on it yet. 98,000 miles, runs good. I don't see any warning lights. Uh, the parking brake is usually set on these. So if I reach down and there we go parking brake is off so we have no warning lights none it's got almost a full tank of gas this is nice not bad important window works less important window works look it's got hail damage you're just gonna have to deal with that replace the windshield and drive it you know what I mean that, that's what I would do replace the windshield get out and drive this thing I want to turn on the air conditioning real quick just see if this works We'll put it into gear while we're waiting. Does it have a backup camera? It does. It's got a nice little backup camera there. Backwards. Absolutely. Forwards. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is not bad. It's basically a Chevy Cruze. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, but it's kind of like a Chevy Cruze. A lot of this is reminiscent of a Chevy Cruze. Yeah, steering feels good, brakes feel good, it goes forward and backwards, AC just kicked in, it's nice and cold now. What more do you want? Revs it, not, revs up nicely. Wipers work? Hey man, listen, if you're in the market for a little SUV type of vehicle, this one's not a bad choice. You know, hey. These things are great. I know there's a lot of people that wouldn't be caught dead riding in something with hail damage. It basically looks like a golf ball with wheels, which makes no sense. But most people would probably be like, nah, I wouldn't drive that. For the right price, I'd drive them all day long because they're disposable. You can, you can write the mileage off on these guys. You can pay next to nothing for these vehicles, drive them till the wheels fall off and throw them away and then write them off on your taxes later. That's the way I look at it from a business perspective. But then again, there's the budget aspect too. You know, not everybody's out here got money. They, they can't all just go out and buy brand new cars. You know what I mean? So something like this is great for someone on a budget, someone looking for something relatively cheap. It may not be the prettiest, but they want something that's going to get decent fuel economy be relatively reliable and cheap to maintain to get them from a to b here you go man this right here a perfect example well ladies and gentlemen that's going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did hit the thumbs up button and let me know consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and be sure to drop those comments down below till next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one